Welcome to Kellis Coder. Today we have a teardown of the Chess Challenger and we're going to dump the ROM for prosperity's sake. Motherfucker! So a couple of weeks ago we fixed the East German SC2, Schachcomputer 2, which was based on this machine, the Chess Challenger. And this is actually one of the first commercially available chess computers. The Chess Challenger from 1979, the prototypes, were actually built around an 8080 processor and it had a real wooden case. And then in 1980, where this is from, and this is actually the Chess Challenger Revision 7, they built it around a Z80 and a plastic case. So let's open it up, let's have a look at the hardware and learn something about 1980s technology. Then we will desolder the ROM, because this ROM is also from 1979, the infamous batch that also uh, the Atari XL had, and that ROM broke in my case. So I want to dump it for prosperity's sake, that in case that ROM does go, I can burn an EEPROM with a little adapter board and put it on there and have the exact same revision. I know that they're downloadable, but it's a nice learning experience. So let's jump in and have some retro fun from 1980. I was seven back then. Unbelievable, I'm so old. <laughs> so this is the Chess Challenger Revision 7 from uh, late 79, which is the production run for the 1980 release. It's just a plastic box with a very fragile DC plug that tends to break a lot. And here is the external power supply, 9 volts, only 350 milliamps. Now the board is held together with clips and you need to lift up these felt feet, very annoying. But other than that you just wedge a screwdriver in it, push the clip back and it will pop open easily like so. And here we have that keyboard, just a sticker with spring leaves on it that make contact to the PCB, very cheap. Here you have a hex buffer that actually drives this PCB. As you can see when we follow the traces, there you go, ah, it's hand soldered, you see the flux, they go to this uh, hex buffer. And we have date code week 23 from 1980 and this machine comes from end of 1980. The initial versions of the Chess Challenger ran on an 8080, then they switched to a Z80 for cost cutting measures. The Z80 may have been the integrated circuit workhorse of the 80s. Oh, 2111AL4 are uh, 256 nibbles of RAM. So put them together, you have 256 bytes of RAM, which was the same as with the SC2, where we had eight individual chips. Just a note, these chips are extremely rare these days. They are very hard to find, even on eBay. And no idea what the chip right next to it is. This is actually a demultiplexer. It takes three bits in and multiplexes out eight different uh, I.O. addresses. So basically to run the individual uh, segments of the screen and probably also select the RAM and the ROM. That's the ROM and this is the RAM. I have not looked into it that much, but I see traces running to the RAM, so I assume it also enables the RAM. And then we have a 74378, which is a flip-flop, probably to divide the clock frequency to uh, 4 MHz eventually. And then this ROM, that infamous 1979 batch of... Uh, ROMs that tend to break a lot, also on this machine. And here we see it is the Revision 7 created on October 30th, 1979. And then the date code on the board, week 26, 1980. I know this machine was bought in December 1980. Now let's desolder that ROM and put in a socket. I did find out that the traces were very, very fragile and the legs of this ROM as well. Oh, here I bend it. Uh, no damage done, luckily. The other side was even more finicky. I lifted up a pad partially that had luckily had no trace on it. So I add more solder to it. More solder allows you to actually have better uh, heat flow to desolder it more easily. Very counterintuitive, but it is true. 
And then I just whisked through with my solder sucker. And now I put in a cheap socket so we can easily switch out the ROM if we have to. I hope not, but after all it's almost 43 years old. And I'm even older and my friends want to replace me. <laughs> I naively thought that a TL-866 could read these ROMs. Uh, no such luck. So I quickly created my own reader using an Arduino Mega. So here we have that ROM, which is basically a 2364. And I hook up all the address lines to that. Those are those green lines. And those yellow lines are the data lines that I connected up to this 2364, basically. And then there is one line that not chips select that we also hook up to the Arduino and we toggle on and off. So after hooking up the Arduino to the ROM chip, I had to write a little program. So here we have the offsets and the not memory request pins. So the address lines start from pin 22, I call that offset A. The data lines start from offset 40. And we have 12 address lines, or actually 13 starting from zero. We have seven data lines starting from uh, pin 40, so 40 to 47. And then the not chip select is on pin 52. Then we have the size of the bytes to read. It's a 4K ROM. So 4K. And then I created a table with the powers of two, which is a whole lot faster than calculating the power. And you have a certain amount of time to read this chip. So I figured let's be quick and let's use a lookup table, uh, the serial. And here I set the memory request or the chip select to output and set it high. And here I initialize all the pins for the addresses set them as outputs and set them low, so basically to address zero. And underneath that we have setting the data lines as inputs and then wait two seconds before dumping it. Then we have a convenience method to set the address. So I loop through the bits of the address value when that bit is set using this power table. Then I set it high and otherwise I set it low with a logical end instruction, which is really quick with this uh, p-table lookup. Then reading the data, a sort of similar way. Initially we need to set uh, the m bytes the result to zero, and then I set the chip select to low, so we can read it. Then we loop through all the data line pins, and when a data line is set high, I again use that P table to look up the value of the power of two that we're currently working with and I OR it onto the M byte. So if we have bit uh, zero for example, then we OR one to the M byte result. Very simple, looping through all these eight uh, values and we basically just add them with a logical OR. Then we have a, a convenience reading method, read data from address, which you pass in an address, that address is set, and then we read the data. And then we just loop through all the 4096, dump it as hex on a new line, so I can read that from a different program that I've written ages ago, that reads a serial port in hex for each line and converts that to a binary uh, number and writes that to a file. So here we see the contents of the ROM flashing by. Now I validate the first two bytes if they are correct, probably are. I use this reading parsing program so often. Yeah, F3, FD, so converted nicely. So we have a good binary dump. So which means that we have a backup so we can take out the ROM put it in and use it as long as this one is all right. And it's kind of hard putting a ROM in through a viewfinder, but there we go. So there you have it. We opened up the chess challenger. We had a look at its innards, its lovely Z80, 
It's really nice and small, efficient design. That's what I really like about this. Compared to that big DDR-SC2, massive machine, uh, which actually is a better chess player than this, as we found out recently. But yeah, I, I also found out that this one actually has a 4K ROM instead of the 1K ROM. I thought it had a 1K ROM, but when I was measuring out to see how I needed to hook up uh, that ROM, I found out, hey, A12 is also connected. So this must be a 4K ROM. So I had a little deep dive and I found out that this actually has a move library in it as well. So that's kind of cool. I don't know why it then lost from the S uh, SC2 a couple of weeks ago, but yeah, there you go. I really like this computer. It reminds me of one that my uncle uh, landed to me back in the early 80s. He had the chess challenger, but the luxury version that actually spoke to you. It was really, really cool. Yeah, so it sort of reminds me of him. So I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.